Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. A good day to those of you joining us across the land and to those of you here at St. Basil's. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Ottawa. This Mass is offered in loving memory of her parents, in thanksgiving for many blessings received, and for the spiritual, physical, and emotional well-being of all members of her family and friends. By choosing to remember your parents in this way, you are joined by thousands of people across Canada, and on their behalf, I thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have come to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have come to bring us the gift of forgiveness. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood to give us strength and courage. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the Apostle John have unlocked for us the secrets of your word, grant, we pray, that we may grasp with proper understanding what he has so marvelously brought to our ears through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have communion with us. And truly, our communion is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. Let the just rejoice in the Lord. Let the just rejoice in the Lord. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Let the just rejoice in the Lord. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. Let the just rejoice in the Lord. Light dawns for the righteous. And joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Let the just rejoice in the Uh 
you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John on the first day of the week Mary Magdalene ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved and said to them they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two of them were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed the gospel of the Lord. Praise My friends, I would just like to briefly share with you a little bit of reflection on the liturgy during these days of Christmas. We, of course, are aware of how our culture and our society asks us to uh, celebrate Christmas uh, with all its uh, celebrations, all its festivities, all of its happiness and uh, merriment. And uh, yet, when we uh, look Certainly, even at the Feast of Christmas itself, we know that we're celebrating a very serious uh, mystery called the mystery of the Incarnation, God coming to us so that we can return to him. But uh, in these days following uh, the day of Christmas, still within the Feast of Christmas, we have a very serious uh, uh, feast days and celebrations. St. Stephen, the first martyr, uh, St. John today, the evangelist, and uh, tomorrow the holy innocents, the children that uh, gave their lives in witness to Christ. A very sad, very sad, yet at the same time very moving and powerful uh, scripture account. And then we continue to serve, to celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family, which was more than just the happy life that Mary and Joseph and Jesus had together, uh, but the struggle that Mary and Joseph as parents with their young son, their young child, had to uh, not only live, uh, but sometimes even to flee uh, from their home. And so we have a, a certain amount of uh, seriousness uh, as we look at our faith and as we at the same time celebrate uh, this time of festivity. And that is good because uh, no matter what the feast is, uh, the church always asks us to see it in its uh, true and very serious and profound meaning. And so uh, the main uh, character today would be St. John. St. John, who was certainly uh, an eyewitness to the words and life and actions of Jesus Christ. If uh, we had to speak in Twitter language of today, uh, John, I suppose, would be a BFF or a best friend forever uh, to our Lord. And one commentary referred to John as being extremely passionate 
uh, in his love for Jesus Christ. That is why he ran to the tomb. He did not casually walk to the tomb where Jesus was buried, but we, told, we are told that he ran along with Mary Magdalene. We see a lot of uh, excitement on that early resurrection morning. And that too, you know, on the one hand was celebrating Christmas, the birth of Jesus, and on the other hand, the church gives us a, a passage in today's gospel about the resurrection, which we might think uh, could be held off for uh, Easter, uh, but that is not the case. John gave, as we know, um, up the uh, security that he had of uh, father, of family, of livelihood, uh, to be with Jesus Christ and to follow Jesus Christ. Sometimes we uh, limit ourselves to saying that John, uh, the other apostles, and the disciples followed Jesus Christ. And in the same way, we try to say about ourselves and our mission in life that our desire is to follow uh, Jesus Christ in the way he lived. However, uh, perhaps a more deeper and a better uh, expression uh, could be, as I have just said, that John wanted to be with Jesus Christ. He wanted to be with Jesus Christ so much that he paid the sacrifice and gave up all these comforts and uh, uh, points of security, such as his family and his work and his life as he knew it up until the time that he met Jesus Christ. And so we too uh, might want to consider how seriously do we want to be uh, with Christ. There is a um, storm uh, here in Toronto and uh, in this part of the country, depending on where you are, we here are experiencing uh, some difficulty. Uh, many people are without power. Uh, there is uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people uh, who are suffering. Some are suffering inconvenience. You know, electronics uh, being down and uh, handicapped as we are to our computer screens and our TVs and our cell phones and all sorts of things that, uh, depending on the carrier, may be affected uh, by this uh, power problem that we have. And uh, the other situation is that uh, when uh, we lose the uh, connection with all these things that seem to attract so much of our attention, uh, we almost don't know what to do with ourselves. Then there's also the serious side that truly many people not only are inconvenienced, but are certainly uh, suffering in some way. Uh, but uh, the point, especially a friend of mine pointed this out to me recently, is how important it is to remain uh, connected. You see, the ice uh, that forms on uh, so much of the electrical cables uh, prevents the uh, connection uh, from uh, flowing, the electricity from flowing, especially, for example, in our streetcars. The ice that uh, forms on the electrical wires uh, prevents the uh, source of electricity uh, from flowing to all the homes and to the individuals that need that. And uh, he pointed out to me, he says, you know, Father, it's like our lives and our connection to Jesus Christ. We need to maintain that constant, constant, constant uh, connectivity. We are never to uh, uh, let anything come in the way of our connection uh, to Jesus Christ. And the connection that we have with our Lord is very, very important. It is, of course, uh, based on the gift of faith that we have received. It is the gift of faith, by the way, that allowed John and Peter, Mary Magdalene and the others to, yes, their eyes were able to see the empty tomb. They were able to see that, but it was their faith that allowed them to understand what had happened in that tomb. The body of Jesus was not taken away. There were no robbers. The linens were folded nicely 
and they understood their eye, the gift of faith allowed them to understand that Jesus had uh, been risen from the dead. And so uh, as we celebrate this feast of this very uh, passionate disciple in his passion and in his love for our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we have the opportunity to ask ourselves, how is our own personal passion and love of Jesus? Do we understand and do we appreciate the importance of our connectivity uh, to the Lord and that the grace and love and peace of Jesus Christ may continually and constantly uh, flow into our hearts and into our lives? Let us offer now our prayers and our petitions to our Father in heaven that through studying the writings of St. John, whom the Church honors today, we may grow in our awe of God's goodness and love to us. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that in these last days of the year, people may look inward and determine ways they can improve themselves spiritually in the new year ahead. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord that those who are mourning a loved one may be comforted by God's grace and their faith in eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray for all of us, those gathered here, those of you at home with your intentions, that we may live out our faith by sharing it with others through our daily words and actions. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray that all who have died may live forever in the light of God's face. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Great and glorious God, we come to you with our needs. Hear and answer us. As always, we ask these things in the name of Jesus, your Son. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become for us our spiritual drink. And pray now, my friends, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all Sanctify the offerings we have made, O Lord, we pray, and grant that from the banquet of this supper we may draw the hidden wisdom of the eternal word, just as from this same source you revealed it to your Apostle John, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten from all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Love you. 
Indeed, holy, O Lord, you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us and gra on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of St. Thomas Aquinas. Grant me, O Lord my God, a mind to know you, a heart to seek you, wisdom to find you, conduct pleasing to you, faithful perseverance in waiting for you, and a hope of finally embracing you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the Word made flesh, proclaimed by the blessed Apostle John, may, through this mystery which we have celebrated, ever dwell among us through Christ, thou our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Ottawa, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick, and your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass. Jesus Christ is born today, ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now, Christ is born.